Today I want to talk uh, about one of the most awesome network uh, monitoring tools that is available to you for free. Uh, just a small inventory. Who here currently has an analog ring node? Raise your hand. Okay, so we need to improve that number. But I'm very happy to see that there are 30, 40 nodes already in the UK. Keep it up. I'll first cover what this ring thing is, and then we'll dive into what the monitoring tool uh, gives you. The analog ring is a network debugging platform that was created out of uh, frustration a few years ago when uh, there were certain problems that were very hard to debug uh, without access to lots of networks. This was a while back. Uh, a friend of mine had a, uh, an issue that he couldn't reach certain IP addresses across an internet exchange, but nobody else could replicate the problem. So what he did was he asked on IRC, can you send me some trace routes? Can you do ping sweeps? He called, emailed people. All of this data was collected asynchronously. Uh, the trace routes he would get were without timestamps. All in all, it was a bitch to debug. Turned out there was a load balancing issue on a particular line card that was only triggered if it came from that particular uh, backplane thingy. But this is was where the ring was born, where it said, guys, if each of us provides a server and then we can just SSH into that server and do our own testing, then we don't need to bother each other to collect data. We can just go out and get debugging information ourselves. So it started with, say, 10 nodes. And it has grown a little bit over the last few years. We're now at uh, over 300 nodes in a ton of countries. There's a gigantic amount of diversity because each of these nodes is in separate AS numbers that have different peering policies, different interconnection strategies, different geographical locations. So there are a ton of angles from the outside world that you can use to uh, view at your own network. A lot of logos. You literally get SSH access to all these nodes around the world. This means you can do your own TCP trace routes, you can do MTU testing, uh, DNS testing, uh, craft your own packets to see if you can trigger layer two or layer three load balancing issues. It's all up to you. There are no restrictions. If you can imagine a test that you require to get your network running again, just log into the box and do it. Now, what is this SQA thing? Nobody knows what SQA stands for, but it's apparently a telco term that has something to do with quality measurements. Uh, and the purpose of SQA, given that we have this gigantic network of nodes, is to detect partial internet outages as fast as possible. It is very easy to detect an entire outage, because your mother will call you and say, I cannot retrieve my email, can you take a look at your network? Uh, but partial outages that affect maybe 5 to 10% of your uh, internet destinations, those are much trickier to detect because you, as a company, you, you won't go out and rent tons of VMs around the world to run your monitoring from. And this is where the ring comes in. What Ring SQA does is from every node, it will uh, send a UDP packet to every other node every 30 seconds on both V4 and V6. From here, a baseline is derived because at any given moment, ring nodes might reboot or be uh, temporarily unreachable. And we're not interested in outages that affect a single node. You're interested in the global impact that an outage might have. And when stuff is really broken, then you want an alert. So this baseline is derived at any given moment from any node to any other node. Maybe 30 nodes are unreachable. Uh, but if that number suddenly spikes and 70 nodes become unreachable, then something interesting is going on. It's not interesting if 300 nodes become unreachable, because then again, it's very obviously everything is broken. But it's the, the small brokenness that we want to get alerting on. So there is a ring buffer in SQA. It measures every minute uh, each probe, each node, two times. The baseline is derived, and if in the last three minutes that uh, the median of the previous 27 minutes is tripped, 
then something is wrong. This is basically a, a visualization of what is going on. All nodes ping each other, any to any uh, connectivity testing. Um, now the neat trick is when an outage is detected, and if previously 30 nodes were unreachable, but now there are 70 nodes unreachable, the program will pick three random nodes that were previously reachable, but suddenly are not anymore, and it will launch MTRs to those destinations and put that in the alert email. I think this is beautiful because when you have an outage, a customer complains and it says stuff doesn't work, he's asking for a trace route. The trace route is performed hours later than the actual uh, complaint was filed. With this system, you get the trace routes and the alert in a single package delivered to your uh, messaging system of choice, uh, and which in many cases will give you good pointers where to start debugging. If all of the outage, uh, the trace routes that were included in the outage alert go over the same internet exchange or the same upstream provider, then you will go search at that RXP if something is wrong with your port or with a large peer. And this is all done within three minutes. It's one of the fastest outage detection systems on the market. And nobody else offers this for free. This is a bargain, guys. Join the ring, get this alerting system, and impress your boss. Let's go over an actual alert. At the top, we see standard email headers. And there is a very polite email that you have received an automated alert from the ring SQA system with a precise timestamp and an indication these nodes three minutes ago were reachable and now they're no longer reachable. You get them listed by DNS name, IP address, uh, AS number, and country. This helps you, again, to focus in on the suspect area of uh, problems. Here are the three trace routes that I mentioned. It picks, if say 20 nodes become newly unreachable, it will pick three of them, launch a trace route, uh, and put that in the email. So in this particular case, uh, a uh, particular PE of a certain tier one provider blew up, and that was very noticeable uh, for this individual. This is a part of the, the ring buffer that I mentioned earlier. It maintains state for the last 30 minutes. It compares the last three minutes with the 27 minutes before that. Uh, and then you can see how high or uh, the deviation is from the baseline. If you already are a ring participant, to start using this monitoring system, just log into your box, edit this particular config file, restart the daemon, and off you go. Very easy. If you're not a ring participant, join the ring. How would you use this in practice? Uh, at NTT, for instance, I've hooked up that the alerting goes to the on-call uh, operations guys. Um, you can imagine that we get a ton of log messages, so if certain fibers break, that will generate uh, a shitstorm of lock messages, and it might not immediately be clear if this is actual, actually a problem or not. But Ring SQA helps us uh, assess the, the nature of outages, because if Ring SQA fires, then something definitely is broken. So far, I have actually not seen uh, false positives. Each and every instance where an alert was fired, I reached out to providers and asked them that was something going on in your network. Um, and from what I could rebuild in terms of history, uh, common causes that we see is that a upstream provider has uh, issues in a certain area of the world that will affect ring nodes in that certain area of the world. Uh, IXP maintenance, funny enough, uh, is noticeable. Uh, the German Internet Exchange did a bunch of uh, maintenance windows uh, a couple of months ago, and most of them were visible. These are transient issues, mind you, the, the outage was maybe you know, three or four minutes, but it's still it's detectable. There was packet loss, and I care deeply about packets. 
DDoS is a common uh, trigger for ring SQL alerts if your ports congest. Maybe it's just one port, but still that port could represent 25% of internet destinations for your particular autonomous system. Uh, and if that port is congested, you, you will face issues and ring SQA uh, notices. I recommend that if you, if you have a, a network that has multiple core sites or hub sites or how you want to call them, uh, just put one in, in every hub site. If you look at, for instance, Amazon, Amazon just puts in every data center uh, they have, they put a ring node because it benefits their NOC. Uh, they have instructed their NOC how to use the ring to debug certain issues, and I recommend you to do the same. If you join the ring, give access to your coworkers, explain to them what it is, teach them the toolkits, and uh, make it a part of your workflow to see whether the customer is wrong or you are wrong. The requirements are simple. The bare minimum to join the ring is that you have your own autonomous system number, you are present in the default free zone. Uh, you provide a single machine. It could be virtual or physical, doesn't matter. It needs one IPv4 and one IPv6 address. The IPv6 address is mandatory. And install Ubuntu 12 on it. And from there, we'll, as ring administrators, we'll take over, uh, run Puppet over it, and get it integrated with the system. Are there... Well, this basically concludes my pitch. If, if I didn't sell the ring to you with this presentation, and, and especially the, the price ticket that is attached to it, uh, I don't know what else could. Um, are there questions about ring SQA or the ring in general? I was wondering if any of your nodes had access to BGP tables, because that would be a very useful tool. The ring operates a, a centralized looking glass. Uh, it's optional to set up a BGP feed. So far, we have 55 full BGP feeds, and uh, you can access that data anytime you want. Perfect. Oh, there is one particular aspect that I uh, would like to emphasize. The ring SQA monitoring fuse your connectivity from that particular perspective. So where your neighbor might not have a ring, out, uh, a ring SQA alert because he has different upstreams, you, you might have an alert. So it's a per node uh, alerting system. And that's why it makes sense if you have multiple core sites to put a node in each core site because each site will have its slightly different view on the routing table with its possible uh, associated partial outages. Uh, Rex McCann, how much uh, bandwidth is used by the nodes? I think currently uh, ring nodes use uh, 60 kilobits per second. So for most people, that should be affordable. Is that 90-bit percentile? <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's constant use. No further questions? Who now will join the ring? Raise your hands. Awesome, guys. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much.